wie Sie die Portale kennen, als jenseitige Durchtrittspforten auf Ceta Reticuli äh, sind äh, diese Portale schon seit tausenden von Jahren ähm, technologisierte Fernreiseeinheiten und die Entität äh, kleidet sich gerade um, um in solch einer Einheit Platz zu nehmen und durch das geschaffene Portal hier zu erscheinen und hier seine Energie auszulösen, mit ihnen zu teilen und wir ähm, werden äh, dafür sorgen, dass die Entität sich äh, ausführlich selbst beleuchtet. Mhm. Mögen sie alle von dieser Aktivierung profitieren können. My dear brothers and sisters, I, as an old native of this space of perception and reality, I would like to speak to you all today. At the request of Kai Felix, the medium, and due to a general request. A message from us higher organized beings. And also expressly about the present global situation how it appears in our eyes, and what our attitude is towards the developments. Some of the many important implications I will try to address, and I thank the entity Hans that I can make myself heard through his possibility to speak through the medium. Recently, the indications within Western spirituality have changed a lot. It started in the early years of the movement. The first signs became visible in mediumistic work, the course of a development in Western spirituality. Early elements of Western spirituality combined with the experience and experiential content of Eastern initiated teachings. The retreat, the detachment in meditation, the meditative retreat is in reality a reaching out and finds in it one of its most valuable forms of expression. Looking inwards actually leads to the outside, whereby this process made possible the very first aspects of an awareness of the cosmic entity human being. In the last decades, the terminologies and the spaces of understanding finally expanded. The processes were given more appropriate names and the cosmic human being began to formulate itself more and more. In a concord of mediumship, spirituality and Eastern mysticism and esotericism. In all these efforts, we spiritual beings who have a positive attitude towards the human being are in the process of creating the spiritual sovereign in man. A human being aware of his cosmic nature. A human being aware of his profound and far-reaching cosmic affinities, which are distributed over all spaces and beyond. Kinship to countless other humanoid species that have entered different evolutionary paths in this dimensional space still inconceivable to men. Thus, this gave birth to more and more initiated individuals who experienced an awareness of the entire cosmic spaces and their inhabitants at early ages. Spiritual circles became aware of this and terms such as indigo children for early reference to cosmic awareness became well established. 
In recent decades, however, the indications in regards to spirituality have also changed for that which was particularly in our interest, and what we are expressing in an urgency, because this incredible creature, with its intense capacities and abilities, and its evolutionary consolidation in a dualistic world of experience, has allowed itself to become corrupted to an ever greater extent. This is no secret. Man was slipping away from us, and our sphere of influence was shrinking. At the same time, the brotherhoods from many sectors of interrelated spaces started to repeatedly issue warnings and related them to us. However, since these warnings were, in relation to Terra, future prophecies, they were subject to the unreliability of probability vectors. Often the reported time frames or the predicted events were inaccurate and a fatal ignorance of the Brotherhood's warnings crept in. Warnings from the Brotherhood's about negative dynamics within the duality in which man experiences itself as part of reality. A duality that was constituted on the trinity of body, mind and spirit, in which good and evil had become distinguishable for man. He is though also subject to forces that are inevitably part of reality in dual space. When there is light, there will be darkness not far. The analogues of love and hate, of creating and destroying, turned out to be dimensional dynamics of the dual space, vibratory variables that repeatedly brought men into the dilemma of each individual decision-making. Each of these can ultimately be broken down to their positive or negative elements and the shades in between. And man, in his ignited materialism, with technologies and their advancements, too often chose false directions. Entire societies eventually devoted themselves to unworthy virtues that negated man's true nature, a true nature that was once given to him, given to him by a being, by the one and all, a collective which in its own nature completely eludes definition whether singularity or multiplicity. Man was created from a gigantic supernatural morphogenesis, as countless equally humanoid life forms were scattered throughout the cosmos. The humanoids of our double star system, the humanoids of the Pleiades, of Orion, of Sirius, of Aldebaran, of Vega, of Arcturus, of Alpha Centauri, and so on and so forth. Spiritually, the human beings of Terra were on the way to understanding that their cosmic relatives actually represented true archetypes of their own being. Because every being was born from whole oneness, deeply related to all cosmic relatives. At the same time, however, this dualistic world space is also home to parallel dimensional spaces in which the human existence is involved. Let's have a look onto the spiritual sovereign in contemporaries terrestrial space-time, in the current dynamics of being, from another perspective, its earthly co-inhabitants of the interdimensional nature do play a substantial role at the moment. You, as humanoid species, do not only share intergalactic world space with extraterrestrial beings, but also interdimensional spaces. This results from shared touchpoints in the great unified source field but also 
Due to the current evolutionary stage of human consciousness, a multitude of interdimensional links exist with spaces and their entities. A supreme form of all humanoid species once was designed. A unique planet was selected for its upbringing, for an unprecedented act of creation. A magnificent and beautiful ambassador of the species was to come into being on Terra, which, by the grace of its birth from procreation in the energy of love, was to live out its special giftedness. Love is a high-frequency vibrational awareness form in which the entity is able to implement complex moral and ethical values in all its doings. Love experienced, love accomplished, a child is born, love is a highest frequency energy form that can be experienced by the dualistic individual. Love in its fulfillment on the one hand, but also love as a continuance on the other hand, are the most complex forms of energy that can be experienced by the dualistic individual to thrive in absolute positive realization within dualistic awareness. We Zetas, with two suns in the skies, apply technologies that have conquered body and mind and time and space. The eons pass us by and distances no longer have any meaning for us. Myriads of beings we have in our history seen coming and going before our eyes. And when we look onto planet Earth, we see how the spiritual sovereign, the man-god, of our origin has gone into hiding. We can see the cosmic awakened human being covering from a virus, denying life for its fear of death, denying the indescribable of which every single wasted second is like a sin against creation. Therefore the true spiritual sovereign is deeply intertwined with its nature of birth, death and rebirth, celebrating life as well as death. As the truest and deepest mystical experience left to modern men, he confronts death openly, the great taboo subject of your societies. The sovereign knows everything in balance, that every action is reflected in mirror universes, and may be in the end thrown back onto you and the causative plane in a potentiated manner. The spiritual sovereign would find ways of managing reality that do not hinder life. There is a participation of beings not from this side, but of beings of an interdimensional nature from the other side. They have been living on Earth together with you for thousands of years, and by and large behave inconspicuously. Many are parasites attached to the human ethereal form. Like ivy on trees, these beings, most of them without identity or self-consciousness, instinctively align and attach themselves to humans and feed off their energy. And just as human needs and pleasure addictions escalated into an endless greed for more, parallel to this, on the level of these beings, highly questionable motives for occupation and attachment arose. Particularly sinister are those entities that are nourished by sexual energy or even human fear. For these beings, fears always contain a higher energetic potential than pleasures, because fears all contain the primal fear of dying. Never having overcome this, man's fears contribute to those beings 
the power to create higher forms of themselves. Remaining in the background, they have created a plan unfolding over decades in human time to tap into their escalated greed for negative human energies and emotions, a never-ending source. Beginning in the 1950s, materialism escalated after World War II and the plan was put into action by the Dark Ones, ensnaring them and bribing the first of them humans, blinding them and functionalize them in their ignorance. So quietly, over nearly three decades, they worked towards one goal. Some would say it began much earlier, but in its most current systemic terms, it is now 28 or 29 years in which direct manipulations have led to the current situation. Manipulation of decision makers, of politicians, of lobbyists, of scientists, bribing the one, seducing the other, and functionalizing the last in his stupidity. It is because of this long period of preparation that things were able to mesh so perfidiously as has happened in the course of the momentary crisis. Just ask the right question that no one is asking. We would like to bless you today with insight and realization, so the question is, who benefits from a world in fear and despair about the future, about a broken economy and thousands of unemployed? Who benefits from millions afraid of a whole world in distress and chaos. Among the human accomplices, there again are those who make incredible profits at the moment by cleverly exploiting situations, until eventually they will be going to burst with the financial bubble in the near future. Other human accomplices in the favor of the hour are trying to impose their social and political agendas onto societies. And those who really profit on a frightening scale here and hold the end of the strings in their hands are not seen. They linger in the shadows and feast on the wounds that are being inflicted onto your societies. Degrading humanity onto a level that already hundreds of years ago plunged the people into a world of fear and chaos of a stranglehold. Fear about the world outside, of hunger, of disease and death, and the things that may end the short life even sooner. But my dear friends, Zetas, the guardians of the portals, speak today also to give hope. From today, in two years' time, a necessary and intense social clash will be settled, and those destructive measures for the protection of higher goods are going to be ending. The massive social rift is thereby one of the central stumbling blocks in coming to terms with the past. It will take many months until forces are back in place, enabling you to recognize how negative dynamics were intertwining in order to ultimately unravel them, and to find back onto passable paths which are all blocked at the moment because they are supposed to be blocked. The confusion and aimlessness you feel is also intentional. Powerful forces are keeping the whole planet in a state of disorientation, which takes away the drive from you humans until you can free yourselves from your paralysis about the situation. In dual existence, everything exists in the field of tension between two poles. Evolution occurs, paradigms are changing, when both extremes align for harmonic balance. 
On the one hand, there is the potential of human beings' cosmic heritage. On the other hand, there is the chance of human redemption in reach in simply finding yourself in each other. This will give you back the sovereignty and strength to free yourself from the current situation. Now benefit from what we are adequately describing here today in this form. You must now come together again, build trust. The rifts and the trenches that have arisen must be filled in. This conflict-laden time now does truly require the divine human being to overcome that which divides families, partnerships, societies and nations. This is where the reactivation of the spiritual sovereign is needed. This is where the human being can now prove and realize himself. Realize interhuman relations in their most significant forms and unite in the ecstasy of being, facing life and death as if they were nothing but a dream, but a speck of dust in the winds of the cosmic tides. Never give up life to avoid death. Death is the culmination of life and will be for very many the greatest mystical experience of their whole life's treasure. There are so many much greater dangers in this life than the virus. Life is dangerous, and if you don't want to miss to live, you have to face it and the fact of the circle of life and death. We all do. A great task is ahead of you, and you will master it on behalf of your divine trait to ultimately grow from great challenges. Grow beyond your momentary selves and current situations to ultimately transcend both. Reflect on yourself. Trust in the heritage of power from wise communicators and spiritual helpers. Trust in the architecture once invested in the construction of men. Trust those allies who use every open heart to step in and to put the pieces together into a greater whole. Reactivate the network. Start small and bring your closest friends back together. Discuss. Many are still avoiding each other because they shy away from conflict in this global discourse. Because behind the mask they cannot see the other's opinion. So people are avoiding communications at the moment. This plays into the hands of your opponents. Curfews are preventing spiritual evolution. In places where life usually flourishes, culture is now dying. This must be reactivated. You have no other choice. Otherwise you will be going down in the annals of this cosmic sector as those who have been given everything and have had everything taken from them. Begin in small ways with your partner, exchange, make love, open the spaces, widen the circles and let in friends. Take an active part in the long process of coming to terms with the past that still lies ahead of you at the moment. The widespread social arguments will discuss and question the current ways of dealing with the crisis. Legal issues will play a role. Accusations and counter-accusations will rise and lower. And all this will already be igniting at a stage when the right eventual concepts are still being formulated. And that takes time. Trust has gone lost. And so especially those who have surrendered in the chaos of irrationality to the manifests of disinformation and to the narratives of deception need to be reawakened. Even if they are those with whom it was previously considered impossible to communicate, now you will be going to open your arms. The magnanimity of love has the power to defeat hate.
The magnanimity of love is stronger. Build the new world on it and on trust and confidence. The network exists. It lies there unlit like an abandoned idle building site, but in which everyone has its place and only has to find it again. When I now appear in my bodily form, all who see me connect with ancient energies and truths. I represent thousands of years of universal reality, and my name is Patar of Zeta Reticuli.